Hi, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. In this week, we're going to take a look at the caching server that's built into a Mac OS server. Now, a couple of changes have happened with some of the software update stuff. As you'll notice here on the sidebar, software update is no longer a feature in server version 5, or at least the Sierra uh, version of server 5. And so that's been removed. So all of the different software updates now are being pushed through the Mac App Store, which means that the caching service now is the one place you would go to actually uh, set up these downloads and have them stored on your server so that they have quicker access. So I just wanted to point that out. In the past, we would have both of those available, and I, usually, I have done uh, in El Capitan server and previous a comparison between the two services, but in this case, the uh, software update service is no longer built into OS 10, uh, Mac OS server. So let's go ahead and take a look at the caching service by itself here. And they've added a few features to it that are important to take a look at. So I'm going to walk you through all of it, but I will uh, highlight some of these features that have changed. First off, the caching service is designed to store a local copy of any updates or software updates that any of your users access or download from the Mac App Store or the iOS App Store. So that what will happen is it will store a local copy. What will happen then is all of your local devices will automatically go to the server to get the update instead of re-downloading it from Apple. So this does a few things. Uh, first off, it speeds up uh, the updates because now we don't have to download them again from Apple server and it stores that local copy so that uh, you don't have to worry about uh, getting it from there. Uh, the other thing that it that it does is it's zero configuration. So the nice thing about it is is your devices will automatically look to the server to find those updates first before they'll go to the Mac App Store. So you don't have to do anything on your devices to configure this service. You basically just turn it on and it starts working right away. So that is a, a very nice feature of the caching service if you want to use it. So let's talk about uh, the different settings here. First of all, we've got the standard permission setting right here where we can edit the uh, permissions. We can cache content for only local subnets, all networks, or only some network networks. Again, I'm going to leave this at local subnet because this is for my local users, not anywhere else. And then I can serve clients with public addresses matching this server's network or on other networks. And again, that would be on other networks if I wanted to uh, you know, have access to multiple networks. Maybe you are in a situation with a business where you've got more than one network running. Well, then you would put uh, on other networks just like this, and then you would add those networks in there so that they're configured so that that way um, everybody knows which uh, networks will be accessing this particular caching server. So I'm just going to put this back. I'm just going to say cancel so I can leave it alone. Now, one of the things that's been added in this version is a peering perm permissions. Now, what this allows you to do, let me just hit the edit here, but what this allows you to do is it allows you to have more than one server be a caching server. So if you wanted to have it in multiple locations, that's fine. And those two servers can peer one another, or in other words, talk to one another uh, to share the actual caching data so that if a machine comes to one server and hits it to look for an update because it's trying to download, uh, you know, let's say uh, an iOS update, for instance, and it may be on another caching server that you've got, possibly in another network, uh, it could be in the same network as well, then those two servers will talk to each other and it will send that device to the second server to get the download to upgrade uh, that particular device. So it is a nice, uh, just a nice feature that just allows you some customization to have those things peer and talk to one another. And again, you can do the same thing here. All networks, only some networks, uh, et cetera. I'm just going to leave that alone. So it does give you this option to have multiple caching servers built in there. Now, the other thing that's been added is this iCloud data checkbox here. And so what the server will do, and it was able to do it previously as well, but now they've given you this option to turn it on or off, is they can cache personal iCloud data. Now, that would include things like documents, uh, photos, those sorts of things. Now, there's pros and cons to this. Obviously, the con to this is the amount of uh, space you have to have to store uh, each user's information. Uh, I've, I've looked online. I haven't played with it myself to try to store it, uh, but I've looked online in it, and some people have said, you know, it's taken up 30 gigabytes per person. And as you add more and more stuff, then, of course, that's going to continue to go up. So this would be something that uh, you may want to turn off unless you really think you need it. And see, as I turn it off, it says, are you sure you want to disable this? 
uh, that data will be immediately deleted. I'm just going to say OK because I haven't even turned the service on yet, so there's nothing to be deleted. Uh, but you may want to turn this off if you're concerned about the size of your cache uh, data because this certainly is going to start to fill that up rather quickly. And, and what it's designed to do is just speed up restores on your local devices so that they don't take as long to restore because they'll just go and hit the server and restore them more quickly. Again, this is just something that you'll want to set up if you've got... Uh, you know, a lot of storage space and you don't mind, okay, depending on how many devices you got. But if you do the math on that, you know, you could be looking at quite a bit of data on there. Uh, so anyways, just want to let you know about that. That's a new feature. Now we've got our cache location where you can choose where that's at. Again, right now it defaults to your main server hard drive. Uh, I would recommend changing it unless you've got a lot of space on your server. Uh, so you can just click this to change location and you've got all your drives that show up there. And so I'm just going to hit this uh, Drobo here and choose it. And so you sure you want to do that? And I'll say, yep. And so it'll say it'll copy the data over there. Now, it's letting me know that I've got existing caching data present because I've done this before, right? So I've got some data sitting on uh, my, my Drobo for the server. And I can delete or move the data and try again or choose a different volume. So I'm going to say OK. So what that's saying is I need to actually remove that data before I get started, before I change the location, because it doesn't reset to the old stuff. So if I just come over here, I'm going to pull up a Finder window here. So let me just uh, click on this. And let me just shrink this down so we've got that there. And then I'm going to go to the Drobo here. And uh, let's do this with it. And then over here under, um, under uh, let's see, shared items, oh, library, sorry, library server. You can see I've got my caching information right there. And so what I can do is change uh, this. I could actually delete this particular folder here, and it's going to ask me to put in a password to do that. And so I'm going to do that and delete this, and so now it'll delete that out. And this is where it stores it in a library, and then it'll create a server folder. I'm going to get rid of that. And now let's go ahead and try to change the location again. And now it's changing the caching, caching service data location, copying any files it needs, and now it's made the change. So now it's over there, and it's ready to go. Now down here I can change the size. I can say unlimited or I can limit it to a certain size in here. If I just change this and just slide it, I can choose how many terabytes or whatever I want to use for the cache size. At this point I'm just going to leave it at unlimited and we'll see where it goes. And then at any time I can come in here and actually reset uh, the cache use. And if I hit this reset button, it says resetting. That's going to del delete all downloaded content and it can't be undone. So if you ever get too full with your caching data or you want to reset it and start over, you can do that right in here and it'll delete all the old cache data and then you can get restarted. I'm just going to cancel that. And now that I've started the service, you can see it says restart devices to take advantage of caching immediately. It says devices will discover the server over time. And so if you want them to discover it right away, you just have to restart the device and then it will discover it. So I'm just going to say OK to that. And so now the service is up and running and is available uh, to use on my local network. So what I'm going to do is restart one of my devices and try to download some information. And let's see if I can show you what it looks like once some data is actually stored on the server itself. OK, so here we are back in the caching service. And I restarted my iPhone and downloaded some information. And you can see here I've got this bar now that shows. And if I just hover over it, you can see I've got iOS software that I downloaded here, about 152 megabytes worth. And then I downloaded a book, which was 55 megabytes in size. And so this will continue to configure itself to show me what information that I have inside my caching service. So it allows me to monitor it, tells me the total amount that I've used here. So I can keep track of it here to make sure that it's either not getting too big, or if I want to reset it, I can come in and do that as well. So at least I know now that the caching service is working. So that gives you an idea of how to st how to use the caching service. Again, with software update no longer being a service, this becomes one of the primary ways to uh, just get updates on your server so that it simplifies uh, the download process and really takes some strain off your network, especially if you've got a lot of users that are hitting it. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac. If you're interested in help in setting up your own server, feel free to contact me at todd at toddoltoff.com.